Hello YouTube, this is Prash from X Accounting. Today I'll be sharing with you a very dynamic uh, fixed asset and depreciation schedule uh, based on straight line method. Uh, this depreciation schedule calculates your monthly depreciation uh, in a very dynamic way and handles uh, all kind of situations which I'll be going through with this uh, in this video. So as I said it's it's a dynamic schedule and uh, uh, it takes care of uh, sale of asset, uh, media acquisition, mid-month acquisition, uh, assets purchased during the year and sold during the year and takes care of profit and loss of the assets and, and, and most I mean almost uh, all the scenarios. Uh, there would be some uh, some qualification I need to make because there are some things which you have to take care of it uh, to make sure that it works perfectly. But uh, let me just explain you the structure of the schedule. As you can see, we have a a structure sheet where I have put uh, I have locked everything. Uh, I will go through the each column separately and tell you which is locked and where you are allowed to data input. So as you can see, you can put your name of your company, organization, the year, and you have to start year of the of the particular calendar year, whatever year you are using. I'm using a simple calendar year for simplification and uh, it it will all automatically calculate end year right now you cannot see formula because i have locked everything so you have to start with here you have to put first uh, day of the year and it will calculate the end date and uh, of course you need to have a serial numbers here and uh, you need to have your asset name depreciation rate this is automatic you have to put your useful life here so you have to put your name here and you have to put your useful life of the assets as you must be knowing, uh, you must have some expectation of your asset when you buy something new. You need, of course, you need to put purchase date and cost of purchase. And so you have to put all these three details initially, four details initially as input. So yellow, light yellow cells are allowed for input. As you see here, 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 everywhere. So uh, once you do that, uh, depreciation will be calculated daily. So here the formula calculates up to three down, uh, up to three decimals. Uh, which works fine for all kind of scenario. I've tested extensively with different figures. It gives you accurate figures. Uh, what I mean by that is when you round it off to zero, it might give you an odd figure or even figure which may not match exactly with your year and uh, book uh, WDV, which is written down value. So I, 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 I tested it a lot and I figured out that up to three decimal, uh, this particular uh, format will work fine with, with many scenarios. So this is the first step where it will calculate daily depreciation and uh, it will also calculate depreciation rate based on useful life. Daily depreciation is basically calculated by dividing uh, total useful life uh, number of days. So basically it calculates uh, uh, figure co purchase cost uh, uh, minus salvage value if you have any. I didn't assume anything uh, for this example. So uh, your uh, purchase cost divided by number of days so number of days would be end date and purchase date now end date is nothing but uh, it, it adds up three years in this particular purchase date and gives you an end date so this is quite accurate and uh, whatever years you put it will automatically calculate this uh, end date for you so based on that you'll get the total duration of your asset in days so that will divide I will put in the denominator of your purchase cost so we'll get a daily depreciation this is important uh, I, I did try different formulas like data if I did try SLN but this method the simple method I'm following works back with this dynamic schedule now I mean, now we are done with this portion now we enter into the sale of asset where if you you can always hide this of course for the format but if you if you sell an asset uh, you have to put the date here and uh, you have to put uh, your uh, sale value of course if you're not selling you just have to put zero but if you don't have any sale uh, of asset just keep it leave it blank and don't change this this, this particular date is same as your end date so it assumes formula assumes that if you're not selling your asset that means it's in the books or it will expire during the year that will come later so it, this column column K will calculate your uh, profit and loss based on whatever sale value put it here this is your cost price block where you have to put your uh, actual landed cost. We, I will also call it a gross value. Opening balance with nothing but your purchase cost. So uh, 
uh, addition during the year I have assumed that you will be preparing this particular asset each asset will be uh, pre prepared individually that's how this whole schedule works so if you are suppose asset ABC and you're gonna buy again ABC a same product or some kind of asset you rather give it another name and put it down put it as addition because uh, formula will not work this whole dynamic dy dynamic uh, schedule will not work it will not give you a correct picture so uh, I advise you keep a separate row for each and every asset even if it is the same class the same same item or same nature of the asset so uh, deletion would be when you sell an asset uh, that will be your cost will be as you know in accounting you have to credit your cost when you sell an asset uh, and the closing balance would be netting off of this so this part is quite easy now the meat and potatoes of the whole schedule is this depreciation working I worked really hard on this formula it is based on if formula and, and it took me one day and few hours to, to figure it out exactly uh, how it will work with that we will we'll get on to that in, in, in a minute uh, on the l last block from column AC to AG AC to AF is all about accumulated depreciation which is your nothing but depreciation reserve you call it so this is also a calculation where it calculates based on your opening value of the asset opening date uh, of, of your particular schedule I mean which period you are working on so it calculates automatically and depreciation for the year is nothing but sum of your depreciation for the year and deletion is nothing but uh, when you sell an asset it automatically credits your whole depreciation till the day there is opening balance plus depreciation of the till the day you the asset was sold so for this example this total depreciation credit depreciation reserve accumulated depreciation credit would be uh, 5983 plus 82868 uh, so 8851 and your asset will be zero so we'll get into that I have all scenarios ready for you and net book value of course will be uh, your closing gross value closing balance of your gross value cost price minus depreciation reserve so as simple as that so now uh, we'll be getting into the depreciation working itself first scenario is where uh, depreciation what uh, assets were, uh, were, uh, were purchased in 15 June 2012 and it has a three years of useful life so 33 percent depreciation and the cost was 50,000 it ending uh, its uh, estimated useful life will be ending on 14 June 2015 and as you can see the depreciated well uh, depreciation calculation is so dynamic that it automatically decides uh, it automatically calculates the depreciation for the month which is for 15 days as you can see it was used for 14 days so around 14 to 15 days it will calculate depreciation but till uh, Jan to May it will calculate uh, normally as asset was in use and after that it will, it will put zero and accordingly your uh, closing balance will be calculated for accumulated depreciation so since asset was fully depreciated it came it, it gave us deletion and why this deletion I'll come to that so but in this scenario even after asset was fully depreciated it was sold on 14 August which is after the date of its when the assets useful life ended so when the period ended was 14 June while in the same year we tra we sold it for a nil value uh, you can put any value here but I assume for now we because our asset was depreciated we either give it away or we sold it for a really minor value so on 14 August we sold it that's the reason this asset uh, was credited as a deletion because asset is no more with us so we have to credit the cost as per accounting rule so I deleted that and there was uh, no profit and loss why because asset was fully depreciated as on 14 August so there was no profit and loss and accordingly the depreciation was calculated but if I put here some figure like suppose uh, we sold it for 5000 whatever currency we want to put so we will assume it's dollar so we so sold it for $5000 and the profit was $5000 why because it was uh, fully depreciated and it makes sense that whatever we sold for will be will be our profit so that is the first example first first scenario well asset is fully depreciated during the year but is also sold during the year so this model takes care of that now second scenario is when the uh, asset has been uh, uh, is, a, is a useful life ends during the year but we didn't we didn't sell it so it's it's a normal scenario but still as you can see the depreciation is calculated accordingly uh, till the August because it was uh, with us with was in operation and was in use till 14 August so it calculated till 14 August uh, 
after that i mean as as you can see it is the same I and mean, it will be zero because asset is fully depreciated so net input value will be zero now in the next scenario next scenario it's a normal scenario well asset has been purchased uh, in 2012 uh, second 1st january and uh, it will end in 31st december 2016 so we still have one more year left from from this 2015 year so it is normal depreciation so it will calculate full depreciation for the year and there would be some carry forward value okay on the next scenario well asset has been sold during the year which is earlier than before its estimated useful life has been ended so suppose this asset was bought on 2nd jan 2013 it has a five years to live and we and it is it has estimated date to to end is first january 2018 it costed us fifteen thousand dollars and uh, as de daily depression will come automatically now we sold this asset uh, due because it got broken down or whatever reason we, we, we sold it on 15 december 2015 for three thousand dollars so this uh, particular model will take care of the profit and loss so you can directly post entry to your books of account now when we sold it, it automatically carries the total value of the asset that we should do. Plus, it will stop the depreciation on the day when it was sold. So it, suppose it was sold on 15 December, the depreciation will be calculated accordingly. So on 5 December month, in month of December, it will calculate depreciation only for 15 days, as you can see here. It will close the assets, it will credit the total depreciation value so far, which is this, plus this. And as you can see here, and it will credit it and your asset book value will be zero so that's that's there and so and another scenario where, where say is same scenario where asset was sold during a little bit earlier and it, it takes care of it as well as you can see the asset was uh, sold in 2000 March 2015 and uh, uh, it was the was calculated correctly in particular there and in that particular month and you see asset value is zero Oh, okay, and the same time, uh, let's take one scenario here where asset uh, useful life, suppose it was uh, two years. Oh, we should make it two years here and uh, we'll make it 2012. Oh, let's change the month. We'll make it August okay so it's useful life supposed to end on first august but it was sold in 15 march so in this case what model we should uh, should do well actually model should calculate depreciation up to 15 march only why because it uh, the word whichever date comes first that should be the end last ending date for the depreciation uh, what was the ending date uh, for uh, original ending date was first august but we sold it on 15 march so the model should calculate till 15 march right and it it does if you see here calculate till 15 March and after the depreciation stops and also asset value becomes zero now in in this scenario asset has been uh, purchased in during the year so in this is 2015 depreciation schedule so uh, asset is purchased in uh, on 4th May so I just and it runs for five years so it is is going to end in 2000, 2020 so this model takes care of your addition date as well it will you have to put your uh, addition and once you put your figure it automatically takes into the addition so the formula takes care of it after that depreciation should start from 4th may so it should calculate for 26 days or 27 days if you take full 31 days so depreciation should only start from 4th may and that is also for 27 days does this uh, this is gonna work of course it does if you see it calculates only for that particular uh, day for which asset was supposed to use until the end and in the last scenario it also takes care of asset which was purchased during the year but it was also sold during the year if you go if you go here the asset was bought on 5th may and it, it, it has 3 years to live it is going to end till 4th may 18 but we sold it for some reason for some un unforeseeable reason we had to sell it on 30th may we sold it for five thousand dollars and we had a huge loss why because it was just bought in the year and it has a substantial value so if you go here uh, in the uh, cost price uh, cost price bracket it all automatically credits the asset accordingly because uh, and also since it was only for a few months it will calculate only from the date was purchased which was 5th may 
and till till it should be calculated till 30th November and it does if you see here it calculates till 30th November and you get your uh, closing value nil so as 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 you seen here this model is is quite comprehensive and uh, it, it it works in most of the scenarios especially for small to medium term if you just want to do a random check i'm sure there are accounting software these days takes care of it but unless in case you just want to to go around and uh, work around and try to just match with uh, your software the software is uh, working correctly or uh, there are some bugs you can use this particular model as I, I told you there are some limitations you cannot add asset here in this particular second second column itself you have to add always add a new new row assume that asset as a separate item asset block and you can create separate blocks for separate items uh, this is just a demo uh, for you to to use it and let me know whether it works for you and let me know your thoughts about it i'll be releasing a complete uh, complete template uh, which will uh, which will be very comprehensive uh, it will have a it will be a will be a build a macro build where you can add a new year it will add new tab automatically your uh, next year's data will be carried forward automatically so that kind of structure I have in mind and I'll be working on it soon so that will be the final version and particular format is free uh, to get this you just have to be a subscriber to my channel of course and leave a comment and your idea about this what do you think about this and any other excel idea you have for which I can make a video about it I have a lot of videos coming up especially related to accounting and reporting with the Excel and uh, and I'm sure you will will benefit from it so if you want really want to use this template you just have to uh, leave a comment and email me uh, drop your email address in, in the comment below or you can private message me on this channel and I'll email you the uh, copy of this template this version it will be completely locked only the uh, columns which are in yellow or, and this particular column which is in uh, dark yellow uh, you are allowed to data enter because it's a sale that you have to enter it so apart from that everything is locked to make sure that temp uh, templates integrity is maintained there are some validation already entered here you see you cannot enter minus values here you have to put a positive value here here also you cannot enter minus so it's quite comprehensive all these dates this data everything is formulated it's uh, it will come accurately according to the year so these days are depend on the date of the year so if it is 31st january 2015 it will calculate 21 days suppose if there is a leap year it will calculate leap it will be 29 so suppose if, if we fall into 16 it should calculate uh, 20 29 days let's try that and it does as you can see here so it is a quite comprehensive sheet i worked very hard on it and as you can see we just changed the date and only the asset which are continuing in the year are, go, are go showing as a depreciation here but ideally you should carry forward this template as a copy paste as a save as a copy and change your bring your balance board forward manually for uh, your uh, depreciation equity depreciation and also for your cost prices so that you are supposed to do i will create a, a com as i told before a comprehensive template uh, which will take care of all this of click uh, so thank you very much guys for joining me today and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and don't forget to get your free copy by just uh, sending me your email address in my personal inbox and i'll email to you this will be only limited copies with me so it will be first come first serve basis uh, thank you once again thank you